Hi, my name is uh, Roland Pöllinger and I'm head of eServices at the Munich Public Library. I feel very honored to be part of this year's Library Journal Virtual Summit. Thank you so much for this invitation and for the uh, great opportunity to contribute to this event and to this community. In my presentation, Open Up, I want to focus on a core library ethos, openness, and I want to share with you how it shapes our work in Munich. Now, Team eServices at the Munich Public Library is all about library technologies, right? Hardware, software, our library management system, data and search, and of all kinds of infrastructure for digital services, digital channels, and analytics. Well, to connect all the dots here and to make sense of our resources, the needs of our colleagues across the library system, and also the expectations of our patrons, openness is at the center of our work on our digital strategy as a value and as a designing principle. So that's why this topic is important to me, and that's why I'd be really interested in exchanging ideas with you too. So to give you an overview, here's my agenda for today's presentation. First, I'll tell you a little more about the Munich Public Library and give you some context. In the second section, I'll try to unify different ways of uh, thinking about how to open up the library by systematizing the potential of public libraries as um, overlapping spaces in uh, the four spaces model. Now, you might already be familiar uh, with this model. I find it a very useful illustration, and I, I think it's also a kind of a theoretical backdrop to the examples that I wanna show you in the next section. I wanna show you five examples or five fields in which openness is a key designing principle in our uh, work in Munich. I'll be talking about architecture, lab concepts, extended unstaffed library hours, open data, and also about web design. And finally, I will conclude by saying that being open is maybe not a state, but rather something else. We'll get to that. Let me give you some background on the Munich Public Library. Uh, here's a map of Munich with uh, all our branches as they are spread throughout the city. We have uh, 22 branches, including our main branch. We, we operate five library buses that enable us to also reach the schools. Uh, we run seven hospital libraries and provide access to special collect collections in two additional special libraries. Now looking at patron engagement, these are last year's statistics. We count five million visits to our, um, to our branches and another five million visits online combining visits to, to our uh, website and to our online uh, catalog. We had 200,000 active library cards last year and 45,000 new registrations. And even with non-digital loans declining, we saw more than 7 million loans last year alone, including um, non-digital and digital materials. And we saw 1.2 million Wi-Fi logins in a very encouraging upwards trend. And let me give you some more context here. One of the things that I absolutely love about my work is that there could not be a more exciting time to join the library. I myself joined the Munich Public Library almost uh, three years ago. And there is so much going on right now. There's so much change going on right now. Looking at Munich as a city, we see uh, strong densification and enormous growth. Uh, now we're in the fortunate position to to be able to grow with the city. Uh, currently, we're, we're planning two completely new branches to be opened uh, next year and the year after in 21 and 22. Urban society is changing too. It's getting more and more diverse and there's an increasing need for inclusive design, another focus area um, at our library. Digital transformation brings enormous change. Uh, in digital uh, technologies where new opportunities emerge, but also uh, in user expectations, posing a great challenge for libraries everywhere, I think. Knowledge is changing too. How we gain access to it, how we use it, 
how we do fact checking and so on. Information is ubiquitously available 24 seven on everybody's personal mobile devices. What was oftentimes lacking and needed is uh, information literacy and maybe something I'd like to call navigational knowledge. And then something I guess we're all experiencing. Library is changing too in its function as a place and um, in its self-understanding. And one important question that we ask ourselves is this, what is our part in all this change? What do we bring to the table in this changing landscape? In our 2020 vision, there's one central claim. This is my place. Das ist mein Ort. That feeling of having a place seems so important to us, we're going to carry it over into our updated vision 2025 that we're currently working on. Well, in the 2020 version, we explicitly state that our ambition is to create physical and virtual spaces to get people involved. Um, now, the, the kinds of spaces that we have in mind here um, are more about people, not so much about books. There are spaces for inspiration, there are spaces for learning, for uh, creating, for exchange, and for expressing oneself. With the idea being that um, these spaces are to be created as a platform to connect people and resources, and people and people, right? So what we need in uh, order to achieve that is an open platform, as open as, as possible. Let me step back for a second and talk about spaces uh, in general and what such an open platform could be made up of. Well, as I said, you might already be familiar with this diagram. It's the four spaces model of the public library from a paper by uh, Joachimson, Scott Hansen, and Rasmussen. I find this picture um, a, very illuminating, a very illuminating backdrop to a discussion about openness. So what the authors suggest here is to think about library work as taking place in uh, four overlapping areas. Um, so in the right upper uh, corner, you have the learning space, right next to it, the, the inspiration space, and on the lower half, the meeting space and the performative space, where the learning space invites you to study, to explore, to discover and where the inspiration space is the space to get inspired, to get excited and to be surprised, to be surprised in. Um, the meeting space is where exchange and interaction happen and where participation is made possible. And uh, the performative space finally is where people are invited to create, to innovate and to express themselves. What this diagram suggests is that public libraries, especially public libraries, are in the unique position to make use of those overlaps and to create an inspiring frame for uh, experience, empowerment, uh, innovation and involvement. And uh, to be honest, I see this as a truly honorable obligation in a certain way. Now this four spaces model of the public library can be mapped into both the physical space and the virtual space. Right? It's about spaces in general. It systematizes the library as a realm of experience, I would say, with its potentials. Um, this model can be used or in, it can be very useful in designing new libraries and formulating new library concepts. But I also think that it can provide strategic guidance, for example, uh, in thinking about digital inclusion and so on. And on top of that, it can be very fruitful in communicating library work. I absolutely wanted to show you this diagram to give you some theor theoretical backdrop to the examples I'm about to show you now. These uh, areas in which openness is an important design designing principle to us. Let me start by saying something seemingly uh, trivial. Before you can be open, you first have to be present. Present in uh, public perception, in political discourse, on digital platforms and in social media, but also as a brick and mortar neighborhood branch with uh, people to talk to and books to borrow. So 
what you what you see here is a picture of uh, one of our neighborhood branches, by the way. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we're aiming to open two completely new neighborhood branches in the next two years. So in times where in the urban environment, space is getting a scarce commodity, and I'm talking about private space on the one hand, but maybe also about public non-commercial space. Our emphasis strongly lies on designing new libraries as spaces of high quality, um, spaces that are comfortable, spaces that are welcoming, spaces that are inviting people to make themselves at home, to make it their own place, their place to study, to work, to co-work, to read, to play games together alone, but at the library, never really alone, right? With the idea always being to, uh, to bring to life the concept of the third place as low threshold as possible. The same is valid for, um, for our main branch, the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest branch. Everybody is invited to come in, to discover, to study, to simply stay and contemplate, to mingle with people, be part of this environment, share ideas, participate in discussion and debate. Well, I, I hope you get a bit of a feel for the building from this picture. Um, you have different activities going on in different tiers, always connected, um, though, by these architectural openings, right? Now, that building is uh, 30 years old now, and uh, we will be redoing it um, and modernizing it starting next year. Um, we absolutely made sure we get to keep those visual axes uh, that underline the landscape character of this library. And actually, we worked with the architects to get to get more of these open views. Uh, well, when we uh, move out next year, we will break up the central hub into four different sides, one for uh, administration, one for storage, and uh, two public libraries, two new public libraries. Um, and we'll use this opportunity in the coming years to try out new ways of engaging visitors and new formats for uh, interaction and especially for innovation and for creation. So here we're peeking into one of the uh, into one of the two interim libraries. It's going to be a construction site until mid next year. Um, so what you can see here um, is one of the big rooms on the upper floor that we're turning into a digital media and uh, gaming lab. Let me try and give you a visual impression of our concept here. What you see is the floor plan uh, with uh, different colors indicating different activities. Uh, those green areas invite you to, to play. Um, there's going to be a competitive esports stage, and there's going to be um, couch co-op gaming islands in the, in the center of this room. Those orange areas indicate opportunity for making. Um, we're, we're planning a maker space uh, counter. We're, um, we're uh, thinking of having a video editing workshop. Um, there's going to be a green screen corner and an animation studio. And finally, the blue area is the space for uh, working, for co-working, for collaborating and design thinking sessions, and so on. Um, now, this is, this is designed to be as open as possible. Right? You, you'll, you'll be able to just walk in and try out new technology or also immerse yourself uh, in games and stories alone or together. But at the same time, we're also thinking about opening this lab concept to partners in the, in the uh, education space uh, who'll be invited to host or co-host events at this location to bring a diverse lineup of activities um, to this place. And um, if everything goes according to plan, we will be opening this uh, interim library and uh, the lab with extended service hours from early in the morning till late at night to invite as much engagement as possible. We already have some experience with extended opening hours. Almost a year ago, we uh, reopened a neighborhood branch in a completely new building 
and we wanted to enable our, our patrons to use their library cards uh, to access the building even after staff hours. Let me let me say that again, right? The situation the, the, the situation that we have in Munich is this: high rents, increasing increasing urban densification, and an increasing lack of non-commercial public space. So we as a library see an opportunity here, and we want to counter that situation by offering high quality space to our patrons um, and access to technology, access to content and access to services. Um, at this particular library, our, our goal was to offer basically everything that's also available during the day. And that includes uh, books and uh, other materials, DVDs, games, um, and then self-checks, book drops, of course, conference, uh, the conference room with all the conference uh, technology, printers and scanners, public PCs, and also tablet stations where you can uh, uh, that you can where you can just pick up a tablet and try out e-media and audiobooks, as well as our uh, gaming area. So for this project, we teamed up with our partners, uh, with our technology partners at Biblioteca and at uh, Aztec, our LMS provider, for a technical pilot project to make this happen. We learned a lot, to say the least. Um, and I'm not going to sweep under the carpet that we were facing many, many, many technical challenges, technical and non-technical challenges, to be fair. Um, for example, and let me just list them. So list, list them for, for you. Uh, for example, data, uh, getting data privacy right was one of the challenges. Network security, probably the biggest challenge. Fire safety, customer safety, uh, the alarm system, um, and also youth protection because we are offering free access to the internet on our public PCs, right? Even after staffed hours. Um, and then another challenge furniture desk, furniture design and uh, service desk design because staff have to be able to leave a clean desk when they leave the building, right? And then uh, digital signage and communication concepts, um, another challenge, because if patrons cannot talk to the staff in person, digital screens have to step in, have to step up and stand in. And that made us think hard about how to conversionally present our content and our activities uh, in, uh, in a fun and engaging way. And we're still trying out different things here. And then the one crucial point, getting the staff involved. This project, to be honest, would not have been possible without our colleagues at the branch who really prepared themselves for a new way of communicating, for, for new workflows, for new technology to handle, above and beyond getting accustomed to the, no, to the new library itself. Um, so actually, open library technology is pretty, pretty much invisible technology, right? You, You'll see the card reader because you need to present your card um, out front. You might see uh, the security cameras and you might take note of um, uh, the, uh, the motion sensors, um, invisible tech. But behind all that, behind uh, making this all happen, was um, it was just a huge team effort across many, many units that, that I'm really proud of. So I have talked about architecture, lab concepts, and the autonomous library. Let me turn to something digital now, something visual and wonderfully interactive in more than one way. Open data and open data projects. Last year, we uh, co-organized and co-hosted the Coding Da Vinci Cultural Hackathon, a series of events where young hackers, coders, and designers come together to come up with uh, surprising digital creations on the basis of materials from cultural archives. We went into our literary archive at our Monatsensia branch that is specialized on Munich literature, and we found a neat collection of last century Munich menu cards. Now in the screenshot on this slide, you can see the fun result, the Schmankerl time machine, the tidbit time machine 
that lets you browse and explore the collection, do a uh, full text search, find the restaurants on a map and uh, put together your very own multi-course uh, dinner and share that with others. A great app uh, that extends our collection in a really fun and interactive uh, way. Um, and let me say this, we, we see these cultural hackathon projects um, as an open invitation to co-curate, to make our histor historical archives come to new life and make them accessible in, in, in interesting new ways. And in more, in more than one way, I would also say this goes a long way towards community building, right? We certainly hope to have more of such project, projects in the future. And here's my last example. In January uh, 2020, we uh, relaunched our website and we designed it from, from scratch to be as accessible, as transparent, as convergent as possible. And uh, to be able to do this, uh, we really tried to put our users and their interests as well as their needs at the center of our endeavor. So let me just walk you through the cover page and highlight a few uh, elements for illustration. The menu bar invites the user to find information, to explore, and to get involved. And all our services and activities are grouped in that logic. The, the, the menu bar, um, in a certain way, just asks you, what do you want to do here? And it kind of like takes you by the hand and guides you through, through, our, through our offers. If the menu bar doesn't seem to offer what, 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 what you are looking for, there's one and just one search box that greets you. This is our unified search that you can use to convergently search for events, for materials in our collection, for all our services, blog posts, etc. Now, by pulling all our content together in this one search mechanism, we really try to boost discoverability here. And um, a third element here, the stage element in the background, in the background is our invitation to co-create and to contribute to this platform. We're planning on using it uh, more and more for content created by our patrons, maybe drawings, scribbles, photos, quotes, and such. Needless to say, this uh, is designed to be work in progress. We want to be able to adapt to feedback from our customers and uh, we analyze the usage by looking at page visits uh, and search terms entered into the search box to better understand our users in order to take this platform even further. So I have shown you five different fields now in which we try to employ openness as one important designing principle. These examples have um, many things in common, I would say. In a way, they're fluid, some experimental in nature or work in progress by design. They build on the dialogue with uh, users and they are more process than product. Uh, what I'm hoping they show is that open is more a value, an attitude, or I would even like to say a journey. Um, it starts with being accessible and inclusive, with uh, living diversity, with fostering a culture of being open-minded. Um, and you can take none of that for granted. None of that is a given. Um, it sometimes feels natural and easy. Um, if you're just adding uh, maybe one service offering, that makes everybody's lives easier. But sometimes it can be really challenging and can mean change in culture and communication. And on the technical side, it relies on the formulation of technical norms, the use of solid standards, good documentation, well-defined interfaces, and um, striking, uh, it means striking the right balance between going for integrated platforms versus um, linked modular microservices maybe. And it relies on connected systems you can use for monitoring um, and analytics. Um, 
And let me close by saying, by saying this. Uh, pursuing openness asks for constant re-evaluation and reorientation and for constantly reassuring oneself as an organization of a common vision and shared values. Now, if all that sounds like a lot of work, it is because it really is a lot of work. I would think that taking openness seriously um, means rolling up your sleeves, getting to it, and staying focused. This uh, journey can be a lot of fun, and it definitely will be uh, rewarding. And that concludes my presentation. But let me re reiterate that I would love to hear your thoughts. If you would like to exchange ideas, make sure to send a message my way. Thank you, and bye-bye.